7:14. Many of us were thankful for that extra hour of sleep Saturday mm -hmm. night when daylight savings time started. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Me too. But for those struggling with the change or was just the sleep in general, we're talking to the experts this morning. And seven. Seven, that's right. Seven <laughs> News is Christine Scarpelli live at Bon Secours St. Francis. We actually woke the sleep experts <laughs> up to tell us about getting enough sleep. We need it. We did. <laughs> we did, but they're so awesome. They're telling us all about the kind of sleep we need, what to do if we cannot get a lot of sleep, what to do to help us fall asleep. And now we're going to talk about things you can do here at the Sleep Center at Bon Secours St. Francis just to get a little bit better sleep. This looks a little intrusive, but we're learning there's masks that are really helping you get some decent sleep, the sleep you need, because we're learning from Ken here and all the people here at the Sleep Center and the Sleep Lab that this is something that keeps you healthy, uh, makes you not fall asleep at the wheel, prevents disease, all different types. Uh, what are we looking at here? This looks really interesting, but we're learning so it's helpful. It is very helpful. So when you have a CPAP machine, uh, you have to have a mask that goes with it. And uh, this is one of the better masks in that it goes directly into the nose, and it has one strap that goes around to the back of the head. It's not so bad. And it's not so bad. Um, so patients usually uh, will like this one more than others. But uh, the importance of a good mask is uh, good compliance. So when you get a CPAP machine, uh, you, you know use it. you have to use it for it to work. So uh, if you have a mask that you don't like, you may not use it, mm -hmm. and that's not a good thing. So we have a variety of masks that you can try use um, to help ease that. Um, transition into life with a CPAP. Well, sure, it helps with insurance, too, if you're looking for a way to pay for this. Insurance requires you to wear it, but right. just bragging yourself just a little bit real quick, you got some pretty good compliance here. Sure, sure. So national compliance for CPAP is about 50%, maybe a little bit less. Mm -hmm. However, we have a program here um, where our compliance is actually 78 to 80%. So making and it easy for people to definitely. be able to do this. And it's a, it's a, a forced goodness, as I like to say. So we have Lori Jones here that is over CPAP compliance. Okay. And 30 days after a patient is prescribed CPAP, they see her to make sure that any problems are addressed to continue that good CPAP use. Fixing the issues. Very good. Hey, if it helps you get sleep, get rest, stay healthy, it might be something you could try, something you can do here at Bon Secours St. Francis. All right, have you guys ever used anything like this? Does this look familiar? No. Yeah, well, I have a lot of people that I know that actually use that and really? it helps them out tremendously. Yeah. 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 I, I just oh, have really? to crank the sound machine up to drown yeah. out my snoring. <laughs> I love what do you use? Is. What kind of sound, Fred? You got uh, the ocean white in the noise is what it's called when you push the button. White noise. Yes, that's white my favorite noise. too. Yeah. That's boring. <laughs> <laughs> boring. That. Thanks, Very Christine. <laughs> Whatever works. Let's yeah. say nice and soothing. <laughs> I'm gonna go to sleep on your live shot now. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. <laughs>